All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Sim Makaya. We are with Israel United in Christ. And the presentation we're gonna go over today is the history of Israel out of Deuteronomy 28. Um, we also gonna to touch a little bit on Thanksgiving and Christmas because uh, all of those things tie into our history. Our history as blacks and, the hist and also the history of the Hispanics and Native Americans. So uh, I'll go to the next slide. Can y'all see the TV? Yeah. Because there's going to be some images that we pull up. Uh, so uh, this is, we are Israel United in Christ, like I said. Uh, our mission, this is a message from our bishop, our, our leader, Bishop Nathaniel. Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003. Our goal is to change the hearts and minds of our people. Blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. Christian churches have failed us. It's time for a change. In these last days, we must give the Bible's medicine to sick people. Then and only then will things begin to change. So um, go to the next slide. So what we're going to go, we're going to go through the book of Deuteronomy 28 predominantly. And then we're going to read a few other scriptures to tie along into it. Just showing how our history, the history of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, it, um, it's, the, the, it's, it's prophesied in the Bible as we go through it. You all, you all will see the things as we show the images and various things like that. So read that first verse, Deuteronomy 28 15. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. And then I want to, are, are you all, would you, do you all believe in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, do you all know who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? No. You recall? Read one and one real quick. Or just flip back one page and go to 27 and one. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So the book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses to the children of Israel. Now 28 and 15. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. <clears throat> but it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So one of the things that Moses wrote to the nation of Israel was that if they break God's commandments, then bad things or curses will happen unto them. Uh, and one, let me backtrack one second. What's your name, sir? Wayne. Wayne. And what's your name, ma'am? Neri? Yeah. Neri. Neri Wayne. And again, my name is Simakaya. So one of the things that Moses said was, if you break God's commandments or break his rules, then curses are going to come upon you. We all know that a curse, when we consider a curse a good thing or a bad thing. Bad. It's bad. So Christ, um, the Most High let Moses tell the people that if you break my commandments, then bad things are going to happen to you talking to the whole nation of Israel. So go to the next slide. We're going to see some of those bad things that happened to the nation of Israel. Uh, read that. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So it says, cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. When you look at the various cities across America, I don't know if you know anything about cities that's overseas, things like that. What group of people are living in bad, have bad living conditions in their communities no matter where you go? We do. Yep. What about the Hispanics? Yep. What about the, Na the Native Americans? Yep. How, how would you say that the Native Americans have, are living in bad conditions? How would I say that they live in bad Yeah, what's some things that's happened? They on reservations, they had a lot of land taken away from them. Mm-hmm. So the, the white people broke all kind of treaties. Right. They thought they had with them. And right, and that's a that's a curse. That's them being cursed in the city because this land was once theirs, even with the so-called Mexicans. Mexico was they had California, Texas, New Mexico, but now you look at it, they got a, they they trying to build a wall up to keep them from coming over there. They call them illegal aliens, illegal immigrants. They got to come over here and get extra paperwork to be on a land that's theirs. That's a curse. 
And even when you go to Mexico, you got the drug cartels, you got all of these various things that's happening within our communities. And even on the reservations, a lot of it's not uh, we don't a lot of us don't know a whole lot about it, but they got gangs on the reservations. They a lot of times they be uh, drinking. They have alcoholics on the reservation. And why? Well, why? What's one of the reasons why our people have the tendency to turn to alcohol? Depression. Depression. Because of the curses. Because of the, the, the hard times that we go through. Just imagine you living on a land and, and a nation comes and take your land. You're trying to relieve yourself. So a lot of times that's what, that's what goes on. We turn to drugs. We turn to alcohol. And you only see these things in mass numbers in our neighborhoods where we live in and it's like we got the short end of the stick no matter how, how you slice it or dice it. Us as a people, we have the short end of the stick. You have, you have a, select, a select few of us that would um, succeed, so to say, financially. But majority of those people, when you look at the various celebrities over the years, you can see that that money didn't change. They, the, that money didn't change the curses for them to say it plainly in line with what we're saying, because they still had those underlying problems where whether it was a, growing up in a single parent household and they had depression, they got famous and got money, but majority of them still battled that pr depression because that money didn't solve the problem. So uh, just to touch on these, how many of y'all are familiar with the uh, Black, Black Wall Street or the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre? You familiar with it? Y what happened at that time? People after the town. Yeah, no, you know what, with that too, that's, a, that's another way to ask the question. They burned it down. Why did they burn it down? We were doing too good at that time. Right, and what, what were some of the things that we were doing at that time? I was building black wealth. Actually, the town was probably the best in the whole state. Right. Actually, that, that, was, <laughs> that wasn't for them. We were doing better than them. So right. They and, created something. And what would that? What would, what would you consider that? By them coming and bombing, what would that be called? Racism. It's racism. <laughs> but what, and because I know you was you was over there. I don't know if you heard when I, we read the the previous verse. No. To what's your name, ma'am? Powell. Powell. And what was your name? Jerome. Jerome. So Wayne. Powell. Um. Hmm? Neri. Neri. Scat. 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 Oh, Scott. 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 Okay. And then. Mary. Jerome. Jerome. Mary. 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 Okay. What's your name, sister? Lydia. Lydia. Yeah. Now, forgive me. I'm gonna ask y'all. I'm probably gonna ask y'all for y'all name a couple times because I'm not. I'm not good with names now. If it was a number, I'm gonna remember it. But names, I gotta hear it a couple times. So. Well, we're going over, just to bring everybody, so we're going over Deuteronomy 28, and we're correlating, we're showing how the Bible correlates or prophesies the things that happen, the things that we see, the things that you all have seen over the years of your life, the bad things, you can see it in the Bible, because the Bible is, a, is the book of the Israelites, but it's actually our history, whereas we've been taught on a, on a mass scale, we've been taught that this was somebody else's book. So a lot of times when we read it, we reading like we reading about somebody else. When, and that's that, that's a that's a whole another story. But we've been reading it for years like it's somebody else when it's actually us. And that's what we're doing. We're showing how this Bible is related to us. So that's that's what the things that we're going through. So read that twenty eight and fifteen. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight verse fifteen. But it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is Moses writing to the Israelites, letting them know that if they break God's commandments or God's rules, that the punishment will be that curses will come upon them. And we, we, we established that a curse is a bad thing. Do you agree? Yes. A curse is a bad thing. So read again, read the next one again. Cursed shall thy be in the city, and cursed shall thy be in the field. So this is one of those curses. Or you could use, this is one of those disciplines. 
Because when you read the Bible, the nation of Israel is God's son. God deals with us as a nation. He don't deal with us. Of course, we have individual things that we got to work on and stuff like that. But on the on totality, as far as blessings and curses, Most High deals with us as a nation. So this says, read it again. Cursed shalt thy be in the city, and cursed shalt thy be in the field. So it says the Israelites will be cursed in the city, and they're going to also be cursed in the field. And now we also tied it into that it's not just us blacks, per se. It's also the Hispanics and the Native Americans, because we are, we are actually all the same people. But over the years, they make it seem like we're different people to keep us divided. Because when you look at it, they call us the minority. They're on reservations. And we point, we show them pointing out that them on reservations, I know uh, Wayne, he mentioned it, that them, them on reservation, they had their land stolen. That's a curse. They owned this whole land and now they're, they're restrained to certain reservations when this is their land that they were living on. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next slide. No, nah, you know, no, go back, go back, go back. I forget. So this is so showing what happened to us in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our city got bombed, but we were thriving. We had our own banks, I had our own businesses. The, do, the black dollar was circulating in our community, and what happened? Uh, uh, a white woman lied and said a little boy looked at her, whistled at her, or looked at her on the elevator, and next thing you know. This is what happened to us. But it, was, it wasn't like, yes, we were thriving, but the one key thing that we were missing is that we wasn't keeping God's commandments. So as a result, that's why this happened. That's why our city was bombed, even though we were doing good. Anytime we get together and we start working together, we gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to advance because that's just in us innate. We are special. Get Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick. We are special people because when you think about over the course of time, just looking at the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, things that we've been through, if any other nation went through the things that we've been through, you think they would have been able to handle it? Nope. Huh? They would have perished. They wouldn't have been able to handle it. So that's how you know that. And we all know it. That's how you know that we are. We are, we are higher, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We are higher grade of people. We have a higher stature. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So this is why, no matter what we do, no matter how low we are, we still dominate sports. No matter how low we are, we dominate everything. Anything that you put us in, we're going to dominate. That's because the Most High chose us. Even though we, in, we are in our lowest estate, we still dominate. But the reason that we are not on top is because we broke God's commandments. The reason that we're not ruling the world like we're supposed to is because we broke God's commandments. That's why we can never get ahead. That's why it's always us being pushed down because we God's people, just like how many of y'all have children? You have children, well, even if you have nieces and nephews, you have you, if you ever had to watch them, they was ever under your care. You give them a task, you give them a chore, and they don't do it, what happens if they don't do it? They get punishment. So right now, this is our punishment, us going into captivity, these bad things happening to us as a nation, this is our punishment for turning our back on our father for not doing what he told us to do. Um, this is another city. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Lake Lanier. How many of y'all ever heard of that? Or Oscarville, Georgia. This is another city that we, because it was many black Wall Streets. I'm pretty sure some of y'all are aware of that. It was many black Wall Streets, but when you examine history, all of them was messed. All of them, something happened to all of them. Here, Lake Lanier, is now, it was, well, actually it's dried up now, but it was a lake. But it was formerly Oscarville, Georgia, where it was another community of us thriving, but it got destroyed and turned into a lake. That's a curse, because when you examine, there's no other, the things that we go through as a people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, there's no other, you can, you can search far, you can search high and low of everybody's um, 
historical records, and they, they, ain't none of them went through the things that we've been through. That's how you know it's a, this, this Bible is, is our history book. This Bible is where, it's, it's actually, it's the source, it's the solution for all of our problems. Everything that we see going on in our community, the only solution is to actually pick up the Bible, read it, and do what it says to do. Uh, go to the next slide. I don't even have to ask this. I know everybody's aware, familiar with this. Can y'all see the screen? Cotton picking. Cotton picking. Cotton picking. This. It says, cursed shalt thou be in the field. So we was cursed to serve hard bondage. Nobody woke up, just wore the, 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 the so-called Caucasian man. The Caucasian man didn't just wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to go to the west coast of Africa. Pick them Negroes up from Africa, take them up, bring them over here, and make them pick cotton. No, it was Bible prophecy that was prophesied to happen because we broke his, we broke, we broke the commandments of God. That's why those things happen. We are cursed. We was cursed to serve hard boundaries all over the world. And the same thing, uh, believe it or not, the same thing happened to the Native Americans when they came over here. Like they, they brought us over here starting in like 1619. But the natives, they started coming over here and taking them as slaves over into Spain in the late 1400s, long before they came and got us off the west coast of Africa. So that's the, that's the, that, that's the correlation to knowing that they also, we are the same people. They did the same thing as us. They actually started the transatlantic slave trade then, and it just progressed over time, and they, started, they brought us into it. Huh? I was just, I was just gonna say they found some somewhere else in another land. No, nah, they knew we, they knew who we were. They they knew exactly where we were because the thing about it, um, give me Psalm sixty four. Uh, I think it's sixty four and four. It's the book of Psalms, chapter sixty four, verse six. They searched out inequities. They accomplished a diligent search. Both the inward thought and of every one of them and the heart is deep. Mm. Read it again. They searched out inequities. They accomplished a diligent search. So it says they search out inequities. It's talking about the so-called the Caucasian. So they search out iniquities. What is what are they called? The um, the ones that do the research? The name. Archaeologists, the scientists. They, re they research, they have the archaeologists digging up fossils and all of that. They're not doing that just because they just, oh, you know what, I just want to go and search. No, they're searching those things out because, so they know the, what the history was. This Bible, why do you think they hid it from us while we was in slavery? Why do, you, why, we think, why do you think we had slave Bibles that had bits and portions of the Bible? They only wanted you to know a certain thing. Exactly, but why? Why would they do that? Because they didn't want you to know your true heritage. Exactly, because they knew, they understood, because they research and they do a diligent search, they understood once we able to read this Bible and see that it's talking about us, automatically we're going we gonna to follow what, what the Bible got to do. And they, so they know, they do, search a diligence, it said it's, read it again. They search out inequities. They search out inequities or sins. Read and they accomplish a diligent search. And they accomplish a diligent search. And they research and they searching. They searched our Bible. So they knew our Bible cover to cover. So they knew, okay, we got to separate them from, they, from their Bible because their Bible is their strength. Their Bible is what, because we, it's no secret, we've all, we, 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 we're all spiritual people. We're spiritual people. But the thing about it, our spiritual, spirituality has to be guided by the Bible. When we disconnect it from the, our source, which is the Bible, we dis, disconnect it from our God, we, we, we go astray. And, and as a result, the Most High punishes us. And the, the nations know that. That's why they search out iniquity. They search out, okay, how can, how can we keep them in sin so that we can thrive, so, we can, um, so our kingdom can continue to thrive? They, that's, they searched deep, so they knew, they knew what they were doing. Go to um, Judah. Judah, yeah. Judah 5 and 20. Go to Judah 5 and 20. So they know that, and I, I, 
I'm going on. I, I forgot what directed me to go this way. But read that. It's the book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God. So this is this is another nation. This is the uh, Assyrians, right? It's the Assyrians. It's the Assyrians, the Assyrian army coming up against us. And this is this is one of the uh, like one of the soldiers speaking to his 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 uh, his uh, lieutenant, his his um, sergeant. This is what he's saying to him. Read. Let us consider that read, this. Read it from the top. Now, therefore, my lord and governor, uh -huh. if there be any error in this people. So he said, if there be any error in this people, speaking about us, speaking about the Israelites. Read. And they sin against their God. And they sin against their God, or they break their God's rules, or they break their father's rules or, or uh, instructions. Read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Let us consider. Let us understand that this is what's going to be their ruin. This is what's going to allow us to be able to come up against them in war and over, overtake them because they in sin. Read. And let us go up. I see you. Read. And we shall overcome them. It says, let us go up and overcome them. Because when they in sin, hey, we're going to prosper because they, they God not going to have their back because they in the midst of sin. They're not pleasing to them right now. But read. But if there be no inequity in their nation. It said, but if there be no inequity, if they doing what they God requires them to do, read. Let my Lord now pass by. Hey, just keep it moving. Don't even mess with them. Because if we try to mess with them, read. Lest their Lord defend them. Lest their Lord defend them. They know when we, when we uh, keeping the commandments, when we doing what we're supposed to do, God going to fight for us. And they don't, want, they don't want that smoke. Read. And their God be for them. Uh -huh. And we become a reproach before all the world. And it says we become a reproach before all the world because they knew this is the, this is the thing where the nations know who God is. And, and they know that we are the children of God. It's just us, a lot of times us here in America, in various spots, we don't know that. We've lost touch knowing that this Bible is our book. It's not the whole world book. It's not all nations book. It's our book. It's our history book. And it's what connects us with the Most High God by us actually doing what he tell us to do. Um, go back to Deuteronomy. Go to the next slide. Uh, verse 17. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. What y'all think this talking about? It says, cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. In other words, we're not able to generate no more. Generate. Or generate. Take care of ourselves. That's on, that's on the lines. Anybody else? So what is the so when you think about a basket, a picnic basket, it, you put food in there to carry it and go out. So a picnic basket is like a storage. So when they say when it's talking about your basket and your store, that's talking about like our businesses. Because when you look at this, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with the Red Summer of 1919 or the Detroit Destroyed Summer of 1967. Y'all familiar with that? Any uh, Elaine? Yeah, yeah. What about Grace the? Riots. Exactly. Race riots in Chicago in 1919. Mm -hmm. In 67, they had that in Detroit. Right. You, you familiar? You know why they had those riots? They're scared. Huh? They said because they're scared. It was, it was. It had. It was that that part. Of course, that always plays a part as well. But it was. It was. I know in Detroit, it was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, like a bar. And the, the accusation came up was, I, f I forget the specifics of what happened prior to, but it was a bar supposedly we were selling liquor illegally, and then it turned into, automatically it turned into a race riot, just to keep it short. But it, you had to, and it wasn't just Chicago and Detroit. It was actually mo in multiple spots. You had the Elaine Massacre that was a part of one of them. It was in, that was, I think that was down in Arkansas. But it was a whole, it was a whole uh, domino effect where all of these things happened, and it was riots. And who do you think came up on the short end of the stick? Black people. But that's, curse shall be that. Every time, and even today, when we start a business, does it last long? No. 
it don't last long. Why don't it last long? Yeah, but what's one of the reasons? What's what's one of the what's one of the reasons why we don't lack of support? We don't support each other. Exactly. We understand that we're the same people. You can even have children, you can have brothers and sisters, cousins, and you will open up a business and your cousins won't support you. Your brother, your own brother won't support you. Where do we get that mindset? Huh? Jealousy and Jealousy, envy, envy self right? Self-hatred. That's a good one. That's Jim Crow. Y'all ever heard of the Willie Lynch letter? In that letter, it details they, they separated us from the young and the old and what you see now. Our young, our young men, one of y'all go try to tell them something, man, F you. They're not going to listen to you. But all of that started in slavery. That's what they instilled in us and just went from generation to generation. They, set, they uh, put the, the old against the young, the light skin versus the dark skin, the woman me. versus the man. They put all of that in, and now you look at our communities, single parent households everywhere. The woman who naturally, in a natural state of mind, the woman naturally submits to a man in a natural state of mind. But now, that's far gone. That's far gone. The man is, is the second in the house, and the woman is running the house because they, they reversed the roles. Over, over through our captivity, while we were in slavery, they twisted everything around. And now we think we're free, but we're living in an oppressed system. Go to the next slide. Uh, read that. Verse 18, curse shall, thy, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. And it says, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Uh, and I, I want to... I'm going to uh, bring this in there. How many of y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? What did you say? How, how, how many of y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? You don't? Okay. You do or you don't? Okay. So my follow-up question, why do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, to be thankful that uh, was it uh, found the United States, I found the uh, <clears throat> fastest, let me see, the, the, uh, the word in, uh, damn, I forget who they were, but they uh, <clears throat> found the land that later became America, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, and what they call them, the, 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 the uh, okay. I can't think of their name right now, but they were uh, uh, the pilgrims. Pilgrims. Okay. You know, we found the land and turkeys and things like that, you know, and had a big bash on a certain day. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, Thanksgiving became because they were showing their thankful thanks to the Lord for letting them uh, survive and find a way. So now I want to, yeah. so I want to do a follow up question. Did they discover this land? Nope. <laughs> so you said you don't celebrate it, right? Why don't you celebrate it? It's a lie. So what, what happened on Thanksgiving? Why do they call it Thanksgiving? Well, what's, what, what's the true history behind Thanksgiving? It was a celebration. Just the pilgrims and the colonists that came over and were thanking them for letting them, I ain't going to say take over their land, but live with them on their land. It was kind of celebrate, celebrating that together. Mm -hmm. But still, I don't know if that's the honor. I would say that's part of the Thanksgiving beginning of the celebration. Okay. So during that process of time, so I mentioned it. This is part of it. We're going to go a little bit deeper into it. But right here, fruit of our body is our children. So now we're looking at this image on the left. This is, it says, I'm going to read the caption. It says, Spaniards killing women and children and feeding their remains to dogs. This is one of the things that went on throughout the process of that Thanksgiving, of them thanking God for giving him, giving them this land that somebody else was living on already. Go to uh, uh, 2nd Ezra 13 real quick. Because I want to just show how 
because this land, it wasn't discovered. Uh, it's a movie called 1492 where uh, they have a scene in it where Columbus is uh, speaking to his uh, traveling partner. And he said, uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he pretty much was saying, let's sail over there because nobody, nobody had really been over here. So he's like, let's sail over here. And the guy asked him, how do you know that it's really land over there? And he was like, Esdras. Esdras is in the Apocrypha, which was taken out of the Bible, but Esdras is the Greek form of Ezra. So that's what we're going to read, and we're going to show how what we call the northern kingdom of Israel, because there was a split, in the, without going too deep into the history, there was a split in the kingdom of Israel. We all, you all familiar, it's 12 tribes of Israel, but at some point, it was a split when king, after King Solomon, after he died, after he ran his son, took over, and then it was a split in the kingdoms. So fast forward, the northern kingdom went off into idolatry right away. The southern kingdom continued to keep the commandments. They remained in the land, but eventually they also fell off into idolatry. But the northern kingdom, this is what we're about to read out. The northern kingdom is the kingdom of Israel that was over here on this land already. And when I, the scripture I read about they make a diligent search, they knew that we were over here because they studied our Bible. That's like they knew we was on the west coast of Africa when they came. They knew they wasn't coming over there and getting Africans. They knew they was coming over there and getting the Israelites. But read that. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. In the time of Oshea the king. So this is when the, the original split came. They split off and they were taken uh, captive into, uh, to, into Assyria at one point. Read. When Salmanazar the king of Assyria led away captive and he carried them over the waters. Mm -hmm. And so came they into the, another land. Now that waters ain't talking about the waters coming over here. Read. But they took this counsel among themselves. So they were freed. They were, at that one point, they were given freedom to go back to their land or go over, and they, this, this is the counsel that they took upon themselves. Read. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Because at that time, there was no man dwelling over here. They knew about this land, but there was no, no one inhabited it. So they said, let us go to a further land where never mankind dwelt, so there we can keep the commandments. There we can get our minds right and keep God's commandments. So their purpose of coming over here was to keep the commandments because they got caught up in heathen customs. They, was, they turned their back on the Most High. Read. That they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. Uh huh. And they entered the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. So they went through, so think about it, they were in the, what they call the Middle East, right where, right where the Euphrates River. So they went around basically in, a, in without showing it on a map, just to try to just give a brief. In the north, northeast corner, northeast corner of Africa, top of Africa, this is where they coming from. So they traveled down on the east. Oh, you pulled it up? Okay, cool. So here, they come down through here, and go around, and this is how they came over to the Americas. We say the narrow, they come through the narrow passages of the river. This is the Euphrates right here. No, that's the Red Sea. Euphrates is somewhere in here. So they came down through the Euphrates River and then came out and came around. Read. For and you know, and just I'm pretty, I don't know if some of y'all know, the images that we see of the map of the world. Africa is way bigger than that. It's way bigger than what they show on the images. So this is, read that. For through that country, there was a great way to go. So it says through that country was a great way to go, referring to Africa. So they went, they, they sailed across Africa. And then notice he said before that, he said that he's, he's, the most high hell steal the flood. Because when you're traveling across the waters, you're going through, from ocean to ocean, like you're going through, from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, when you, when you cross, a, cross those waters, it's going to be some, uh, uh, it's going to be choppy. It's going to be a, a, a rough, 
a rough travel because you, you're going to a different uh, sea of water. And even just going that long across that, that much of water, you got hurricanes, you got all type of stuff going, waves, tsunami, you got all that going on, but it says the most high hell still the flood until they came over. Read. Namely of a year and a half. So it was a year and a half trip from, from, from here, going around and coming over to the Americas that we know today. They didn't go, they didn't travel across no, uh, they say the Bering Strait. They didn't travel across the Bering Strait. Read. And the same region is called Azareth. And this region is called Azareth. At that time, the Americas was once called Azareth. Read. Was that it? Yeah, that was, that was it. Okay, so that's how, let's go back to the, uh, so that's how, the, that's how we got over here. That's why we was already here. And because this is in the Bible, they already knew that we were over here. So when he came, when they came over here, to discover the land, they knew what they were coming over here to. They knew that we was already here. They knew what they were doing. They, they was coming over here to conquer. Uh, because if you, when you examine history, we were over here still in the midst of idolatry, sacrificing. We, I don't know, have y'all ever seen the movie, what is it called? Apocalypse. Apocalypto. Apocalypse. Y'all ever seen the movie Apocalypto? It's a newer movie. like. But basically, they were over here sacrificing human flesh. They were doing all type of wickedness. So that's what happened. Like we said, that's back to the curses. That's what happened to us because we broke God's commandments. These are the things that he brought up to us. But this is this. And then uh, here on this side, yeah, you have our children up here as alligator bait. Y'all familiar with that? Y'all ever heard about that? Our children being used as alligator bait. But that's why it says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Our children, we are cursed. So our children, that's what they're going through. When we look at the streets of Chicago, the murders, all of that stuff, that ties back to us being cursed. Our children are cursed because we are not keeping God's commandments. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> so this, so it says, um, read. Uh, 18. Verse 18. Curse shall thy fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of the sheep. So it says, so curse shall be the fruit of thy body. One second, one second. That was the whole verse? Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, we touched on this picture already on the, that's on the left. I said, touched on it briefly. I says, Indian land for sale. Get a home of your own. Easy payments. Perfect title. Possession within 30 days. Fine lands in the West. Irrigated, irrigable, grazing, agricultural, dry farming. This is your land being cursed. You, you here living on your land. And somebody, a foreigner, just come and take over your land and now they selling it. They offer it for sale. That's, the, ain't that a, that's a curse. That's something you, your land being taken right, right from up under you. Um, this is a part of the, what is called the Dawes Act of 1887. And it says the breakup of indigenous lands. This didn't just happen by happenstance. It happened because these are the Israelites and they broke God's commandments. The one on the right, you see, this is millions of buffalo that was slaughtered. And I'm going to pull up just to touch on the, some of the numbers. So this is bison or uh, buffalo. This is a chart. It says uh, before 1800, there was 60 million bison. By 1830, it was 40 million. 1840, 35, 35 million 650. 1870, 5,500,000, 5, 5, wait, 5.5 5 million, I'm going to say it like that. Uh, 1880, 395,000. Uh, 1889, 541. The 1900s, 300. So, 
that's what you see here. They came and it says, curse shall be the fruit of our land. How it went from 60 million bison to over the course of 100 years down to 300. Tell me that's not a curse. That's your, 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 the, uh, the increase of your kind is cursed. They, they, and they, they, this is a picture. They take, this is, you see, a, you have a Caucasian sitting at the bottom and a Caucasian sitting at the top. That's a prize for them to destroy your land. But that happened because we broke God's commandments. This is, we call it thanks killing, not thanksgiving. But we go a lot because of, a, because of tradition oftentimes, we just go along. We just go along with it and, and celebrate the holidays that set up. And a lot of times we don't know the, the, the real origin behind the, 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 the days that we celebrate. Because with, with thanksgiving, the turkey represented the, the, the body, basically the people that they came to overcome. The cranberry sauce represented the blood that was shed, and the stuffing represented like the, the guts and all of that. But it's, it rep, Thanksgiving represents them coming over here and taking, stealing the land from the Native Americans and calling it their own, changing everything, sectioning them off on reservations. That's what Thanksgiving represents. And those are, we are the same people. Those are black people. I'm, it's, it's not, those are, those are the Israelites. Those are our people. So we're, when we celebrate Thanksgiving, we're celebrating the slaughter of a nation of people, the nation of our people. Go to the next slide. So this is more. Read 19. Verse 19. Curse shall thy be when thy comest in, and cursed shall thy be when thy goest out. So we're born, you're born a slave, and you die a slave. Not yet. You're born, you're born a slave, die a slave. Um, so that curse when that shalt thou be when thou comest in, when you're born, you're born into slavery. Today we kind of deceived because we think that we're free, because we don't have chains on our neck no more. But it's... We, we, we're getting, more so now, we're getting images of, no, you're still a slave. Because what happens, we get pulled over by the police. If you talk slick to the police, what's bound to happen? Going to jail or getting their butt whooped or something. Nah, today they, they, they advanced that. Yeah. That's what happened. Well, we're getting shot. Yeah. And what is that? What happened to the runaway slaves? <clears throat> they got killed. They got killed. That's, a, that's all that's going on. It's just happening in a different way where we, we look at it as a lack of justice and things like, nah, it's happening because it's, a, it's, a show, it's showing us that we're still in slavery. We're still in captivity. So when those things happen, it's not, it's a cop shooting a black man or it's a cop. No, it's a, it's a slave master shooting a slave because the slave got out of line. That's what it is. Just to speak it plain, that's, that's part of the curses that we are going through. Uh, go to the next slide. Read that. Verse 20, the Lord shall send upon, send upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, and all thy cities thine hand into for to do until thou beest destroyed, until thou perish quickly. So it go back to the same thing I said. We got the short end of the stick. It says, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand to do. Every time we set our hand to move forward as a nation, we hit a roadblock. Things get destroyed. Black Wall Street happen. All that, 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 no matter what we do, no matter how far we try to advance, we always get a stiff arm. All right, no, you ain't going nowhere. That's because... The only way to, for us to succeed, get uh, Joshua 1 and 8 real quick. The only way for us to succeed as a nation is we have to go to the commandments. Uh, read that. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but shall, make, shall meditate therein day and night. So the Bible lets us know that this book, this Bible, it should not depart out of our mouth. Meaning we're supposed to always be studying it, always seeking for ways, thinking of ways to actually apply what it say. This is, this is, the Bible is supposed to be our life. 
but through, through various things, through, one of them used to, through envy, envy of other nations, things that other nations may have, got, they may have going on, we went astray. We went away from what the commandments say because just like to think some of the things that happen today, some of the reasons why a, a brother will go and rob somebody because, oh, he got more money than me. He got, he, he, it appears he got a better, a better uh, plot than I do when he live right next door to me, he going through the same struggles, but he got it better than me, so I'm going to rob him. So that mindset, we, we never have enough. We're not content. So we saw what other nations was doing, and we thought that they had it better when the Most High gave us the world. And we didn't understand. We, we lost sight of that, so we started doing other we, we started doing outside of what the Bible tells us to do. Read that. We don't know how to do, don't know how to get what other people can get. All right, like the new car, but the new house. But the thing about it, we shouldn't even be worried about it. Because mm -hmm. right. the thing about it, this is our mindset should be this. And I'm going to go to uh, Matthew 2. Read that. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So when you meditate on something, what, what generally happens? When you meditate on something, you meditate, that means you're thinking about it, you, you're rehearsing it in your mind, rehearsing how, what you could do and all that. You meditate on it. That's the key. You start living it. Because when you meditate on something, that becomes your way of thinking. That becomes how you think, how you make your decisions, how you, how you live your life, your actions. Read. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And that's, that's what the Bible said. It said you meditate on it so that you can observe to do it. Read. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, uh -huh. and then thou shalt have good success. So it says then, when we do that, we meditate to observe to keep the commandments, then our way going to be prosperous. That, let, that we don't have to worry about Getting, getting this new car or getting that new car or getting this money. All we got to do is keep the commandments and the most high is going to take you care of start, us. You'll start living like your brother lived. That, doing you know, you, you'll start living like the most high wants you to live. Right. With the, just like you, have, you, you, you men, y'all have sons. You, you, when your son coming up, and your man, this is my son, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to provide. Your son get, get, get to worrying and all that. Don't worry about that. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. That's how, that's what it, that's how our mindset's supposed to be. But a lot of times we lose sight of that. We try to go get things our own way because it ain't happening fast enough. Uh, read that in Matthew 6. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So now it's, in Matthew it's saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The kingdom of God is in reference to the nation of Israel and his righteousness is going back to his laws. So seek him. And what is, what's going to happen? And all these things shall be added into you. He's going to add everything to us. And when you read up in the chapter, we're not going to be able to read the whole chapter for time's sake. But when you read up in the cha chapter, it talk about how the flowers, the birds, everything, they just do what they was made to do. And he take care of them. He feed them. But when it gets to us. Like, nah, I got to do this, I got to do that. I, we worry about things that we shouldn't worry about. Our focus should be, hey, you know what, let me make sure I'm keeping the commandments, I'm doing what God told me to do, and he's going to take care of the rest. He's going to make sure I'm good because I'm pleasing to him, I'm doing what he told me to do. That's, that's what we have to come back to. That's the, the whole gist of why we go through what we go through, because we turned, we turned away from the Bible. We turned away from God's laws, and that's the that's the only solution. Because marching, things of that nature, is not marching, voting, going to into the Christian church. Those things are not going to fix the community. Because uh, we we mentioned it a lot. When you go, just in Chicago, how many of y'all are native to Chicago? What? How many of y'all are from Chicago? Oh. So when you from where we at, we, we, uh, where we 103rd and Western Halstead right now. If you go from 103rd and Halstead to 79th and Halstead, how many churches are you going to see? Approximately. <clears throat> Just by that reaction right there. That let, that, 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 that lets me. 
Y'all see the... A lot of church. And, that, and, and what about the community behind the church? How was it? It's bad. Yeah. Ain't it, if, if, so if, the, if, the, if, the, if it's, tw- let's say it's 20 churches. If it's 20 churches in, what's that, 20 blocks? It's like 20 blocks. If it's 20 churches in 20 blocks and people are going into these churches, paying their tithe, shouldn't the community behind it be getting better? Yes. Has that been happening over the years? That lets you know that... that, that it gets worse. That lets you know that there's a disconnect somewhere. So if the churches are, well, we just read, we read the churches are supposed to represent the Bible. We just read, if you meditate on the Bible and observe to do the things written in the Bible, then you're going to have good success. That means our community is going to be successful. Everything is going to be successful because we're following God. We're doing what he told us to do. But if you got 20 churches on the block and a job of a pastor, uh, give me that and hold that. I'm looking over there. Hold that. Give me uh, Malachi. It said, preach lips should keep knowledge. Okay. Two. Because when we go, what's the purpose of, what's, what's the reason that we go to church? Only be to follow the good Lord's uh, will. And right. And uh, live according to God's word. Exactly. Read. There's the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge. Uh huh. So and the priest's lips shall keep knowledge. The priest is referring to the pastor, the, the religious leaders. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the law at his mouth. So when we go to the church, we're seeking the law. We a lot of a lot of our people sincerely go to church because they, hey, I want to I want I want to change my life. I want to get better. So they're seeking the law. They're seeking the how do I how do I please God. But if the church is not teaching you how to please God, then ain't nothing going to change. Ain't nothing going to get better because the church ain't teaching. And that's what's, that's what's going on within our communities. The churches are not teaching God's laws. Give me that in Micah 3 and 11. It's the book of Micah chapter 3, verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. It says the heads thereof judge for reward. When you go into the Christian church, predominant, if not 95 to 99 percent of them, if not 100 percent of them, when you go in there, what are they doing? Passing the collection plate around four or five times, telling you that you have to pay a tithe. When how many of y'all know what the tithe actually is? Well, what is, what is the tithe? So 10 percent of your income. Now, now this is what I would say, and I will, I'm gonna ask a question. Uh, how many of y'all have went to church over the course of your life? Right. So I want. Uh, so, what's your nationality? Baptist. What's your nationality? Baptist. Baptism Catholic. Baptism Catholic. Okay. True holiness. You said true holiness? Now remember, I said, what's your nationality? And I just told you. Nationality. Oh. So think, so now, uh, just think about it. What is your, what is a, what is your nationality? What is a nationality? Uh, where you originated from, where you came from. Right. So, and then I'm not, I just asked that question because one of the things that we go to the church to find a solution, but one of the things, one of the major things, that's, that's a, um, because we all heard you got to know your identity. When you go to church, they say you got to know your identity, know who you are in Jesus, things of that nature. But if you don't know your, because your nationality is what nation are you from? That's pretty much what you're saying. And everybody, I think for, for the most part, everybody that answered gave me their religion. So that communicates that the church is not teaching what it's supposed to be teaching. Because when, if you believe in this Bible, you should know that your nationality, everybody that's in here, your nationality is an Israelite. You are an Israelite. That's your nationality. 
according to the things that we're bringing out. Because when you say you're Baptist or you're Pentecostal, those are all religions. And man-made religions at that, because when you look in the Bible, you're not going to look in the Bible and find Baptist. You're not going to look in the Bible and find Pentecostal. You're not going to look in the Bible and find true holiness. None of those things are written in the Bible. Those are all religions that have certain customs and all of that that you find. But back to, the, uh, back to what I was addressing with the tithe. Go to Deuteronomy 14. Because uh, my brother said in the back, he said that a lot of the churches are robbing the, robbing the people. No, let's finish that real quick. And Micah. They're robbing the people. People pay their tithes. The, the, preacher, the preacher got a, a, a Maserati. But the congregants are coming to this church on a bus. Yeah. The, the preacher living uh, matching with a $400,000 house. But the community around him is in turmoil. Huh? Exactly. All of them. They just on a, they on different scales, but they all are the same. They all one and the same. It's, it's, it's a business. The, the, the church today is a business. It's not about fixing the community, because if it was about fixing the community, the community would be fixed with the amount of churches. And it's not just Chicago. If you go to Detroit, it's the same thing. It's a church everywhere. It's churches on every corner going up and down the streets. But yet the community is not benefiting from the church with the amount of money that come in just on a Sunday at a church. But the community is not benefiting. And we understand that the building has bills, things of that nature. We did. Yeah, that stuff got to be taken care of. But when the pastor has a, a, a $50,000 car, that, that's, that's kind of shaky. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children.